it's all subjective bro and like and you just have to know your worth you know what i'm saying i'm the only one that can um uh, tell people my value so yeah. it's really just the marketing and branding almost yeah it is buy a piece of the artist that's what you're paying for yeah Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests, and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting, and here's the episode. All right. Welcome back, guys. Digital Social Hour here with an upcoming artist, one of the hottest in the game right now, Art Lana. How's it hey, going, man? Hey, I'm doing amazing, brother. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so you've been at this for a while. You said you painted in kindergarten? Yeah, 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 man. I started, uh, yeah, I like always knew how to draw since I was a kid. I feel like I was born with the gift. And like yeah. all my teachers growing up, they were like, yo, you're so good at drawing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That gave me the confidence to pursue art. Amazing. You know now, saying? drawing is a very hard space to make money in, right? Yes. So when did that first opportunity arise? So like uh, I started when I was a kid, but then I stopped um, drawing when I was like 13 and I started making music. And then all the way to 2020 uh, when it happened, it's what made me start painting again. Mm -hmm. And then, but nobody knew I could paint because I haven't painted in years. And right. I started painting, I went to the art store, I got the canvas, I got the paint. Um, I started painting and then all my friends were like, what the f bro, you're really <laughs> good at this bro. You can make a lot of money. So I'm like, hmm, yo, they might be right. So I just took it serious. I started painting 10 paintings a day, painting 10 paintings a day, bro. And yeah. like it just, from there it was history, bro. And what would you paint? Just different things? Yeah, like I would paint like portraits of people. So like I would um, like I would message 100 people a day on Instagram. Like, wow. Yo, yeah. Like, yo, um, let me make a custom portrait of you. Let me make a custom portrait of you. I was just messaging 100 people. So that's how I was able to build like a clientele. Now I have over like 3,000 collectors, that Damn. people that own my paintings. That's amazing, man. Yeah, bro. And that's the hustle that people don't see. Yeah, people don't see that. They call you an overnight success, but yeah. you've been DMing 100 a day for two years straight. Exactly. That's what I did too mm -hmm. at first. Oh, I really? DM, yeah, 100 a day for three, four years. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's the same like door-to-door -door sales. It was like DM to DM. Like, yeah. So it's and then who was that first big celebrity client for you? Man, it was, um, so this was in 2021. Um, my homie calls me. He's like, yo, Drake is having his birthday party. You should paint him and his son. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's a good idea. So, um, but the party was the next day and he called me at like 3 a.m. So <laughs> I only had like six hours to paint the painting. So I painted the painting um, and I pull up to the party around 7 p.m. before the party starts. And the security is like, yo, what the f*** are you doing with this big? painting it's like a six foot tall painting that shit's huge and i'm like oh, so i had to come up with an excuse real quick i was like yo drake's dad told me to surprise him yeah so they let me through so they let me through they walked me to the green room where drake was gonna be <laughs> no way i put the painting back there i leave and then i come back at like 11 p.m when the party's jumping and then there's like a big line outside so i'm like that i'm skipping the line i went to the back to the front the security remembers me so they escort me back there. Everybody's looking at me like I'm a celebrity or something because they escorted me to the green room. Yeah. Then I walk in the green room. I see Drake in there. The painting's in there. I'm like, yo, I'm the one that painted that. He looks at it. He's like, nah. I'm like, yo, for real, I painted that. He's like, what? For real, bro? I love it, bro. And like after that day, bro, like that's when I started charging like $20,000 for paintings. And wow. people just hit me up. DJ Khaled hit me up. I did one for him and his kids. And like just went out the roof that's bro. incredible dude yeah. so what were you charging before the 20k 250 dollars so you 100x overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real that's insane yeah i was only charging 250 dollars dude that's crazy do you yeah. get mistaken to be a celebrity a lot man people come at me yeah i mean people <laughs> already tell me that i'm a celebrity like you get yo, that they, vibe yeah like they just be like yo you're a celebrity now yeah I, I'm, i just feel like i'm just normal you bro know when you were at my event last night someone came up to me and they were like is that kodak black <laughs> <laughs> no way, that swear, Kodak bro. is crazy. I swear. Kodak? Oh my god. <laughs> I nah, was like, what? That, that's crazy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> straight jokes. I don't get mistaken. I mean, I don't look like anyone. So. <laughs> now nah, you, you you look like yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you went from uh, paintings to cars, right? Yeah. So what was that transition like? So it was crazy because I had an, um, an Art Basel event called Art Beast um, in December last year. And then this is the day before the event. My home, my, my homie calls me. He's like, "Yo, Artlana, you want to paint my Lamborghini?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, F "Yeah." I'm like, "Yo, to be honest, I don't know what to do on it, so I'm gonna just throw paint on your car." <laughs> and then he was like, "All right, let's do it." So the next day happens. Um, he brings the car. I threw the paint, and then after that day, my uh, my homie Neil was there. Neil, have you heard of Timepiece Trading? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Neil, he was there. So he's six nines jeweler. He seen me throw the paint, and then he calls me 
a month later with six nine on the phone. He's mm-hmm. like, yo, Arlan, I got six nine on the phone. He wants you to paint all his cars. And I'm like, oh, f-. so I paint all five of his five of his cars. And then that's when the shit just went f-ing viral. And wow. Like, everybody's like, yo, paint my car, paint my car. And then it just happened just like that, bro. Yeah, you did Sean O'Malley, you did yeah. Natasha Graziano, you mm-hmm. did a bunch of big people. Yeah, bro. And I saw you actually get some hate for it. Bro, every day <laughs> I get hate. They're like, yo, anybody can do this. Yo, my two-year-old can do this. And I'm like, hey, all right, go ahead, go do it. Like, But the thing is, like, it's I'm not just throwing paint. You know what I'm saying? People come to experience. So when I do these cars, people come. I have events called the Artland Experience where people come watch me live paint these cars. And when I'm doing it, the art of the cars is like me performing. It's like a performance art. Yeah. And I'm like throwing the paint and then putting all my energy behind the paint and I'm speaking life behind the paint. So it's like that whatever I speak into this throw, it's captured on the car. Wow. So now it's it's captured for life. It's not going anywhere. So it's the intent, intention behind the paint. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Art's very fascinating. A lot of it is subjective, right? Because yeah. there's pieces that sell for millions. I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't understand it. But then there's pieces that I think are amazing mm-hmm. selling for like 50 bucks. Exactly, bro. Yeah. It's all subjective, bro. And like, and you just have to know your worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can say this is worth $250 or I can say... This is worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm the only one that can um, uh, tell people my value. You right. know what I'm saying? Who's who are like the goats in the art space? Like people you look up to? Um, right now, uh, Damien Hirst, Takashi Murakami, I f- with Alec Monopoly. Yeah. Uh, and I got some friends that are dope artists like Yost, Andres God, um, Alan Berman. Those are some upcoming artists yeah. right there. And those guys that were high up, like, what do they sell their pieces for? Man, they're. They they sell their pieces. Damien Hurst probably has a piece for like five million. What? Probably like ten million, honestly. Holy yeah. crap! What is it? Just and a painting? Just yeah, it's just a painting. He just just throws paint on a canvas as well. No way. Yeah, yeah, and his goes for like ten million. Oh my gosh! So yeah. it's really just the marketing and branding almost. Yeah, it is. Because you're doing the same. Exactly, bro. And it's like it's it's the same thing. Like um, Nike can sell shoes for. Two hundred fifty dollars, but Louis Vuitton sells shoes for two thousand dollars. Right. It's all about the branding. You yeah, know it's the same quality, yeah. probably. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just a f- shoe, <laughs> but it's just the name brand. People are buying the artist. They're not even buying the art. Right. You know what I'm saying? You buy a piece of the artist. That's what you're paying for. Yeah. Are there any brands you want to collab with in the future? Hell yeah, I want to. Um, I'm going to collab with Louis Vuitton. Wow. I'm gonna collab with Nike. I'm gonna collab with Lamborghini, so I'm gonna come out with my own Lamborghini. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you call, serious? Yeah, called the Lamborghini. Dude. So how many will, will there be? Probably like twenty in the, in the whole world, and probably sell like five million a pop. Holy you, crap! Yeah, dude. you know how Virgil came out with his own Maybach. Yeah, yeah. Like he did a limited series, so I'm gonna do the same thing with Lamborghini. Like you're already talking to them, or you're just yeah, manifesting yeah, yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually yeah. Dude, works, yeah. congrats! Mm-hmm. I mean, so the sky's the ceiling with this yeah, stuff. Bro. No, there's no limit to this. Like, where do you see this going, man? This is crazy to me. Man, I believe that I will be the one of the greatest artists to ever live. Wow. Like, ever. That's what I believe. And, Dude, I could see it. Yeah, bro. So, and I mean, it's already happening. Like, I just, it's only been 2020 since I started taking it serious. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I All, believe it's going to happen. I could see it. Mm-hmm. You got the energy. You got the the branding. And you got the right people around you. Yeah, exactly, I think that's bro. important, too. Mm-hmm. And the also, also, the cool thing with art is my friend has the biggest Basquiat collection in the world. What? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's not even public, but... <laughs> We were talking about this earlier. He takes loans against mm. his art. Mm-hmm. So I think each piece is worth like two, two million, two five. Yeah. So whenever he needs money, he just goes to the bank, goes to a lender. Yeah. Gets two million out. Exactly, bro. Yeah, I can do that with my art as well, too. Have you done it yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it appraised and then um, say this art is worth 60000 I need 60000 I go to the bank. They'd be like, what are your assets? And I'd be like, oh, I have this painting. Yeah. And then uh, I get it appraised, 60000 Okay, go to the bank. Oh, they give me the 60000 for the loan. And Insane. Yeah. So you're like a real life money printer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like there's not many things. I can't think of anything else where you could just create it within a day and mm-hmm. get a loan out against it. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, the art, the, it's the master of art. Yeah. So now that you're getting all this money, all this attraction, like mm-hmm. what's that lifestyle been? Man, um, I mean, I feel like me, um, I just upgraded my lifestyle, but me personally, I, I, I never changed like the inside of me because yeah. I came from nothing. Wow. And I, and I always remain humble, like grew up dirt poor. My parents moved from Nigeria, like slept in a studio apartment. My mom had eight kids. All eight of us were sleeping in one studio apartment. So Dang. like that's what really made me who I am today. I feel like poverty created my drive and my hustle and the mm-hmm. fire inside me. So I will always remain humble, but... 
I just from coming from poverty, like I always wanted to have things. So I treated myself to a brand new house, my cars and all that stuff like yeah. that, just to experience that lifestyle. Right. Do you, know you still talk to all your brothers? Yeah, yeah. Every that's day. Cool. Yeah, wow, seven day. siblings. That's a lot. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm an only child, so I know that's really? a whole different lifestyle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But growing up in poverty must have really motivated you to want more, right? Yeah, bro. Made me hungry. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They've done studies on this, man. Like it's actually a benefit. To grow up kind of poor yeah i heard about that yeah. it's nuts like if you look at the data like people that grow up with money they mm -hmm. don't usually end up as successful yeah because they're like oh i know i'm, I'm gonna be good you know yeah I mean? so it's like but if you don't grow up with anything you're like you have nothing to lose so yeah. it's just like you go all in for everything absolutely what's yeah. the most expensive car you've painted um it was in it was either the sf90 ferrari or um svj lamborghini they're mm. both they were both about around one million dollars at the time I holy painted crap them. yeah million dollars yeah what if you like mess up <laughs> <laughs> people always say that but the thing is it's like art is not even perfect so I, there's no mess ups right like it's just it comes out how it's supposed to be interesting yeah because i'm just throwing the paint on the car so, so you literally splatter. have a bucket of paint and yeah you're just dumping it like yeah like i put it in a cup i have a certain cup i call it the it. magic cup and i just throw the paint and then like and then the way i throw it it does a certain technique of splatter and it creates like different types of yeah. techniques of splatter when I throw it. Now, when you paint a car, does it increase the value of the car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually does because one of my friends, I painted his Rolls Royce and he just sold it for an extra $100,000. No way. Yeah, because my art was on there. Dude, Somebody so if it. you were smart, you would just paint a few cars right now, hold them for like five yeah, years. Yeah, that's then... what people are doing. That's what 6 ix 9 is doing. He doesn't even drive the cars. He's just keeping them <laughs> keeping them cars. Wow, so yeah. he's still got money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah There's yeah, some yeah. rumors that he went broke. Nah, 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 nah. Um, damn. Yeah, Do you, are you into watches? I know you mentioned Neil earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love watches. I, Dude, love, I love watches. I have five. I want more. Yeah, AP, AP is my favorite watch. Same. Yeah. Yeah, AP and then probably Rolex. I don't I don't buy the Milli hype, dude. Yeah, the Milli, yeah. The Millis are cool. I don't like the strap. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else are you spending money on? Um, Honestly, like... Are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? Well, click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below, and here's the episode, guys. Just like traveling, that's where all my money goes. Mm. Like I, I go to Dubai all the time, Tokyo. Like We're on tour right now. We just go to New York. Now we're in Vegas, Miami, LA. We're going to LA on um, Sunday, like just traveling and then spending money traveling. That's really where yeah. all the money goes. Through. I think and, that's and one of the best ways to spend. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah. But like, uh, of course, I have investments as, as well too. Yeah. You know what what kind of stuff are you investing in? Um, uh, I just bought a property in Atlanta. Nice. Um, yeah, that uh, I invested in um, this one uh, tequila company in Miami right okay. now. So uh, yeah, I got a couple of best. And then mostly, I just invest in myself because yeah. I believe like I, I am my best asset. That Absolutely, I have. man, dude. <laughs> I really feel like you're gonna be top five all time. Yeah, I appreciate that. And I have a good sense of like seeing seeing winners, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate that. I bro. think that's why the podcast has done well because I could spot people and be like, "Yeah, he's gonna blow up." Yeah, yeah, people say that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true, uh, Kim Kardashian hit you up? Yeah, bro. Bro, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, if bro, I was in New York and in my hotel bed. And I'm just going through my DMs and I'm like, "Yo, it's Kim Kardashian." I'm thinking it's fake page though. I go through <laughs> my message requests, Kim Kardashian. I'm like. It's verified. 300 million followers. Like, what the f***? Yeah. <laughs> she wants me to f paint her Lamborghini. Did you so, paint it? Not yet. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the works with it. That's I'm speaking nuts. with her management and stuff like that. So. How did you find out about you? Bro, honestly, I don't even know. <laughs> 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 bro, like, it just happened. Like, people just be DMing me out of nowhere, bro. Like, wow. Just out of nowhere. That's so cool, Be man. finding me. Has anyone tried to mimic or copy your style? Um... Actually, no, I haven't wow. seen it because it's surprising. new. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right now I'm one of one. So like somebody copies me, they're going to know, yo, you copied Atlanta. Yeah. So it's like nobody's really doing what I'm doing. Wow. Have yeah. you done any Ferraris yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a Ferrari, SF90, the Ferrari is the nice. SF90, yeah. What's been your favorite one like just that you did that you, you really liked? Man, look? it's so hard because I, I have multiple favorites. Like like the Brabus G-Wagon I did for 6 9 That's one of my fav favorites. Mm. Rolls Royce Cullen and I did for one of my boys, Keo. The SVJ Lamborghini I did for six nine. Bro, it's just it's so many. Yeah. I have like over sixty cars that I painted. Wow. So you've probably done like every color at this point. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like 
It's crazy, bro. Yeah. And this is since last December. It hasn't even been a year. It's been 11 months since I started painting the cars. Damn, you did 60 cars in a year? Yeah. How long does each one take? Like 30 minutes. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like a full day thing. Nah. I mean, it takes like an hour to prep, like tape up the lights and the windows and stuff. But the painting is only like 30 minutes to paint it. So you're making 20K an hour. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Must be nice, man. Yeah, bro. It's crazy. I created my own lane. Yeah. Like nobody's doing this. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So what's your advice to aspiring artists to kind of just find their own lane, basically? Yeah, like find find your lane and be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't look at other artists and try to copy. Right. Try to create your own image, create your own brand so people can gravitate towards that. And it's organic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because people can tell if you're faking it or you're copying or you're organic. You know what I'm saying? For so people sure, can dude. like read that energy. So if you're organic to yourself, to your brand, to who you truly are and and it aligns with your vision, I feel like you can be successful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that goes with anything in life. Yeah, anything. Not just art. Yeah, yeah it's with anything in life. Yeah, I mean, look at you, man. You did art your whole life, and people just see the past year or two. Exactly, bro. Like, it <laughs> takes time. People want to get successful in, like, a month. Yeah, they do. It takes time. It does. It just takes time and dedication and focus. Like, yeah. if you cut out all the distraction in your life, I feel like you can achieve anything in this world. I believe anything and everything is possible. Absolutely. So like cut out the distractions, keep great people around you. If you have greatness around you, then you will be great. Mm-hmm. If you have losers around you, you're going to be a loser. <laughs> you know, it's really that simple, but yeah. people don't like doing some shit. Cause right. Some people are just lazy. They're on the phone all day. They don't want to do shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's so simple. simple. You know what I'm saying? Keep overthinking. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's not. <laughs> it really isn't. So Yo, did you even go to art school in college? And no, stuff? I didn't even go to I dropped out of high school. Of high school? Yeah. Wow. Dropped out of 12. I could have graduated. That's the crazy thing. I dropped out of 12th grade because I was like, I don't want to go to college and waste my time. Right. I wanted to go chase my dreams. And that's what I did. I just left Atlanta and went to LA. Mm. Like I was homeless, didn't know a soul in LA. I just left. Damn. Just went to LA, slept in IHOP, sleeping on the street, just hustling, grinding, grinding until like I made a name for myself. Holy crap. Yeah, dude. bro. Dude, what a story. So you didn't even come to LA with like an apartment or anything? Nothing. Wow. And that was the plan just to... Yeah, bro. I just believed. I just had so much faith that I was going to be a star and I just left and I was like, yo, I have nothing to lose. I just left and went to LA. That's insane. And what was that like mentally on you being homeless there? I mean, mean, at first it was kind of hard until like I started to see like people, when people met me when I was homeless, they didn't even realize I was homeless. They thought like I had money and like that, but I was broke you know what i'm saying i was homeless and oh. so but that kept me going you know what i'm saying that that kept my faith going like okay people are believing in me yeah so that's what really um helped me uh, go through that damn you know so how long were you in that phase before you got some shelter um like two years two years yeah, yeah. dude yeah then i'll I wow. start to meet people then i start couch surfing sleeping here my homie's couch here then my homie's couch there for like a year and dude, yeah most people would have given up yeah bro i couldn't give up because i believe like you got to keep going. That momentum, you stop. Like, if you see a rocket, like a rocket takes off, it doesn't stop in the middle of the air. Right. It keeps f-ing going. Yeah. So you got to just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's you really I, had that belief, man. Yeah. Early on. Yeah, bro. And you didn't want to come back home, like, kind of ashamed. Yeah, like, hell yeah. no. I was not going to not gonna go home. I feel that. So did your parents support this? Yeah. I mean, my mom, because uh, I, uh, I lost my father when I was five years old, so I didn't yeah. really grow up with a father, but my mom always supported me. She okay. always knew. When I was born... She uh, bought a sign that said a star was born. So wow. she always knew that I was going to be a star. You know what I'm saying? That's incredible, man. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. What do your other uh, siblings do? Uh, I have a little brother. He makes music. Uh, one of my older brothers is an actor. My um, other brother has a successful clothing brand. Wow. Some of my other brothers are like in real estate. So all entrepreneurs. Yeah, they're over, everybody's an entrepreneur. That's cool, man. Yeah. That means uh, you had a good environment. Yeah, bro. Growing up. That's mm-hmm. cool. Um, are you still doing the canvases, the Yeah, paintings? I still do canvas, um, but I'm doing less canvas now because like, I don't need to do a lot of canvas anymore because like now my clientele is like high value network people and like, mm-hmm. and my art is expensive, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah. everybody can afford the art. So I, I sell less art, but I make more money now selling right. art. So yeah. that's you just um, sold out your art basil event in like a few minutes. Yeah, right? bro. <laughs> like it's like 1600 tickets right now. Holy crap. Crazy. And that's just me. Wow. That's no no marketing agency, no labels, no ad, no paid ads, no nothing. Just Nuts. me. Just, just yo, I'm going to be here, Art Basel, and then boom. Some people spend months trying to sell out their Basel events. Yeah, bro. And then my shit is like going crazy. You might have to have two now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I had to get a bigger venue. So at first the cap was 1000 And then 
we maxed out a thousand so quick. I got a bigger venue now. It's two thousand. <laughs> But right now, I'm at like 1,600 tickets. I'm going to check it right now. That's nuts, dude. <laughs> I'm at like When fucking... I checked, it said sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I added, I had to get a new venue and I added more tickets. Wow. And how much was each ticket? Uh, So there's like uh, tiers. There's like general admissions, $20. VIP is... um, uh, 100? 250. 200. Yeah, oh, yeah, 250. Yeah, 250 VIP. Wow. Yeah. 1,601 tickets. Holy crap. Yeah, bro. That's nuts, man. And Fucking that's just crazy. one post? That's just, bro, one post. It's on my page one time. Dude. So what, I can't even do the math. But <laughs> it, bro. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Man, so what's the uh, the, the plan there? Are you going to paint a car live, basically? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to paint a Rolls Royce Cullen. And, and then auction it? Live. Yeah, I'm going to auction it. Yeah. Have you done an auction yet? Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Those are crazy, I heard. Yeah, I heard. I've been to some it. charity ones. People yeah, like I mean, uh, to bid pretty high on those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, bro. Yeah. But now, once I get in the auction space, it's over. Yeah, change the game. Yeah, dude. Yeah, some of those auctions are Sotheby's. I think. Yeah, it's Sotheby's crazy. Go, like cray like hundred million. Like, yeah, it's just like it's a. What's the process to get on there? I mean, it's all all about who you know. I believe right. you know. what I'm saying like I can meet somebody at Sotheby's tomorrow, and they be like, okay, bring one of the cars there. We're gonna auction it off. Wow. I feel like it's that simple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not no full whole process. You just gotta know somebody, and if they like you. It will help you. you know yeah, what I'm saying? life's all about who you know. Bro. Yeah, it's all about who you know. And people try to focus on other. Yeah, bro. It's like focus on your network and your value. Yeah, your network is your net worth. You yeah. know that 100. percent Absolutely. Yeah. How do you choose the people around you? I'm sure you get a lot of people trying to leech off your energy. Yeah, I mean, I just because my circle is so tight. I mean, the people that I keep around me is my team, like my art beast team, my um, my manager, my CMO. Yeah. Uh, and like my videographer, like that's just all. All the people I hang out with every day okay. because we're always working on the goal. You know what I'm saying? So we're not distracted. We're not, oh, let's go party. Let's go do this and that. We're like, let's focus on the vision. Let's build. Let's do that every day, every day. Nice. So that's how I keep myself focused. Yeah. But if you have people around you that support you, but they want to go out and party and they want to, but they're your friends, but they can be a distraction to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you got to be careful and you got to um, separate friends with business, kind of. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and Atlanta and Miami are big party scenes, so you yeah. got to stay disciplined and exactly, locked in. Exactly, Do you go out a lot? Nah, because uh, I moved out of the city. I used to live in Brickell, yeah. but I just got a house in Miami Lake. So now I live in a house, and it's like 30 minutes away from the city, so right. I don't go out. I don't get <laughs> Gives you an excuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could get lost in the sauce yeah. in Miami, man. So, I know people that pretty much give their souls away out there. Bro, for real, bro. It's serious out there. No, they literally look like zombies because they're in the club till 6 a.m. 6 a.m., like space, space doesn't close. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, but bro, 11 a.m. in the club, I'm like, yeah. what the f***? They're at 11, at 11. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, hell no, nah, nah, dude. If bro. I don't get my sleep in, mm -hmm. I'm pissed the yeah, next bro. day. Yeah, bro. You need that sleep for sure. Yeah. But I like your work ethic, man. So do you even drink or do anything? I mean, uh, I don't drink a lot, but um, I drink sometimes. Yeah, same. I don't smoke weed, though. Yeah, I, I gave up weed. Yeah, I stopped smoking weed like four years ago. Same, dude. It, I mean, I don't know. I feel like there's more cons than pros. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, especially like the next day, it just kind of rubs over. I know, and you're like all like lazy. You just yeah. like chill and like don't care about shit. I feel yeah. like that's what weed is. It just makes you relax and just don't care about anything. Yeah. It's like La La Land. Yeah. You like Miami better than Atlanta? Yeah, way better. Miami's the best city in America. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Because right. I that's lived in statement. LA too for six years, and Miami's way better. I've only been there for a year and eight months now. So. Damn. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's a statement right there. I feel like L.A. is, people choose L.A. over Miami, but. I don't know. I, I feel like L.A. is soulless. There's parts of it that are for yeah, sure. Like, Have you been to any weird parties out there? Yeah, like, <laughs> it's just weird out there, bro. L.A. is I've weird. I've heard some weird party Yo, stories out there. Some weird yeah. LA, bro. Yeah, I hope not to uh, encounter any of those people. Yeah, just stay stay with your circle. <laughs> yeah. But when you reach a certain level, they kind of approach you. I know. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's probably going to happen to you. With, with your influence, man. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I know, bro. Yeah. So what's next for you and uh, where can people find you, man? Man, what's next? Um, so, yeah, does that, like we said, December 8th, I'm having my um, Art Basel event. It's going to be crazy. Um, I'm building my art label right now as we speak. You know how music labels, they sign artists? Yeah. But I'm doing that with painters. Like I'm signing painters oh, to a nice. label, giving them a platform to expose their art and teaching them how to sell their art. You know what I'm saying? Building the brand. That's what I'm building right now. 
I'm working on building my own art car museum. So I'm having a museum in Miami full of like all the cars that I did. People mm -hmm. can like come through, buy tickets, take pictures of the cars and shit like that. Oh, so, that's sick. You're working on a lot, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm working on. But yeah, I can't wait to keep an eye on it. I know you're going to crush it, man. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. next time I see you, you'll probably be a billionaire. Hell yeah. Let's, Let's do, do it, man. It, brother. Thanks for coming on. Hey, appreciate you yeah. for having me. Thanks for watching, guys, as always. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Oh, yeah.